I've been a fashion and style creator for the past five years, and there's one comment that I've seen more than any other on my channel. And no, it's not, oh my god, you're the coolest ever, Christina. No, I wish, but thank you if you did say that. It's, you should dress for your body shape. And although my immediate response is usually to be like, F you, I'll wear what I want, I have to admit, I was kind of getting curious. Because I feel like there's a little bit of truth to every hate comment that you don't want to admit, so I figured instead of being pissed about it or entirely dismissing it, I wanted to know what are they seeing that I'm not? Are they onto something? Because I don't know if you noticed, but for the last few years it seems like personal style analysis has really taken off. From getting your colors analyzed so you can determine which colors best suit you, to figuring out if you have a short torso and long legs, or if you're a gamine, a romantic, an apple, a carrot, a spongebob, or a patrick, it seems like everyone's interested in using these tools to help improve their style. So I wanted to know, what would it be like if I figured out my body type? Does it even matter to know your proportions? Would it actually improve my style and help me shop better? Or is it all a bullshit scam so that I dress to look skinnier than I am or to have my boobs look bigger? So I hired a professional body type analyst to find out. So this is my current closet and I just want to give you a sense of what I like to wear and what my personal style is. I love to wear oversized blazers, comfy pants, sneakers, and there's not a lot of color in my wardrobe. Okay, well there's some red, but it's only because I like to live life on the edge. What I don't wear are a lot of feminine pieces with frills or embellishments, and I typically don't really like to wear super tight fitting clothes. Some of you may say that my clothes downright don't fit, but to be honest, I kind of like it that way. And when I get dressed, I typically rely on creating balance with my outfits rather than having to think about what shape category my body fits into when. And this is my body currently. For reference, I'm 5'5", five five, and I've always thought I've had a fairly athletic build. In terms of proportions, and feel free to fight me on this in the comments, I think that I have a long torso and short legs, and I'm basically built like a rectangle. I have very little curves, small boobs, and I feel like I tend to hold weight in my upper body, actually. So now that you know what my current style is and what my bod looks like, let's go talk to the stylist. Meet Ellie Jean Royden. You may know her better as Body and Style right here on YouTube. I've been following Ellie for years now, and she has a ton of great content on how to improve your style using objective information like your color season and your body type. To be honest, I don't know why it's taken us so long to get together, and I'm really excited to see what she has to say. Okay, so I am just getting ready to hop on the call with Ellie Jean. I am so excited for this because I'm just really curious. Not only do I want to know like what my body type is and what would be quote unquote most flattering, but like what that means to a body type analyst. And I'm curious too, because I've been working out quite a lot. So like, I feel like my upper body especially has changed quite a bit, getting jacked, you know, getting a little swole. So I feel like sometimes, um, I feel like so the, sh the shape of my shoulders has changed. I'm curious if that even does change or if that's even something that you consider with body type analysis. So I think Ellie Jean will really um, reveal a lot of things for us and I'm about to hop on the call with her. So let's go. And if you want to see the full unedited conversation I had with Ellie Jean, you can check out my Patreon and it'll all be there below. Oh my God, hi. As an introduction, um, my name's Ellie Jean. I've been making style content for a couple of years now. And I started making content about the system called Kibby Body Types, which is a complicated but incredibly fun 12 to 10, depending on your perspective, body type system created by this man called David Kibby. He sort of rose to fame in the 1980s. So this was like a big movement at the same time as the Colour Seasons thing was a movement originally. And I do somewhat still work in Kibby. I'm moving towards my own framework for looking at body types. Um, mm -hmm. So I'll talk to you about both today um, in terms yeah. of your own style. But I'm calling it the Body Matrix. It's fairly simple body type principles um, that I've kind of gleaned partially from Kibi, partially from other styling systems that I just think work the best. And that's mostly what I'm working with now. I just have some like thoughts about like body type analysis. And I feel like maybe a lot of people have a lot of misconceptions about it. So why would someone need their body type analyzed anyway? Like how does that help you with your style and your confidence and all of that? It's a really mm -hmm. great question because obviously for the past 10 years, especially it's been dressing for your body type is a bad thing. It's always yeah. going to bring up negative emotions. That's kind of the the messaging that, we, that we've seen that and I think that comes from the 2000s relationship with bodies and body types being so especially negative and how the idea in the 2000s that was dressing for your body was 
hiding your insecurities and hiding everything that was wrong with you and trying to be perfect. And I would say the systems that I work with are really different to that. And they're much more about, I mean, firstly, you don't need to dress for your body type. If it's, (laughs) if that's an idea that just doesn't resonate with you, that's cool. Some people though are looking for a little guidance in what echoes their features best and what makes them shine visually and are just looking for that little bit of comfort. I think that styling comes from these two places, right? Of let me show my identity and let me feel really confident and beautiful. And I think that this plays a role in that as well. So that's why I think dressing for your body type can be really positive for some people. It can be a way to get in touch with your figure, learn about your features. And when you dress in harmony, as you sort of say in in these systems, um, you kind of echo your features and everything looks very um, harmonious, right, like it's meant to be. And also from a very practical level, it's more comfortable because you're not trying to force into a waist of a dress, which is built for a completely different body type or right. force yourself into a like a straight pair of jeans when you have like a curvy waist and they're obviously big at the waist. So it's kind of knowing what's going to fit as well. So those are the two main components that draw me to the system. Maybe you can kind of myth bust this for us. What does flattering mean in these body typing systems? A lot of people think that dressing for your body type is about looking thinner, looking skinnier, looking Mm -hmm. like the perfect hourglass. And I would say the fruit shape system, which is the one most people are familiar with, like um, you're an apple shape, you're a pear shape and so on. That system is very much how can we pretend you have a tiny waist and this idea of like, balancing out your proportions um, as if there's something inherently wrong with your shoulders or inherently wrong with the way you're built. In Kibi, it's more finding harmony and echoing the features that you have. So rather than trying to balance yourself out, just going with the flow of the way you were naturally built and not trying to force yourself to be anything else or dress against the lines of your figure. Personally, I think it's a way to acknowledge your features and just echo what you are. So let's yeah. say, for example, you have like a really straight figure. It's not about trying to look like you're an hourglass. It's just about wearing things that are also straight. And then in doing so, everything comes together and it looks really intentional. I would say the flattering element is this idea of intentionality and like awareness of the way your body's built and the way that it flows. That's the main difference. Some people still don't like that. I personally love it. I think right. that it's the most exciting way to dress for your body type that I've ever seen. For example, realizing as someone who's five foot two, someone who has some curviness in their figure, when I try and wear outfits like Kendall Jenner, they look completely wrong on me. They look, they (laughs) overwhelm me, they're huge on me. They just look silly. And understanding why was so freeing. So I would say it's less to do with looking like you have big boobs or a tiny waist or that you're even or proportional. And it's just that You look intentional and you look like yourself. I think that's what we're trying to bring out. Your best features are there and they're represented. Can you tell us a little bit about your system of body typing? Let's get into it. I'm so curious. Sure. So the body matrix, which is what I'm calling my framework, is something that I've developed Mm -hmm. really recently, the past few months. And it's basically taking the underlying principles of so many style systems, which are these three elements, width, length, and shape. So width is how wide you are in your shoulders, um, chest and hips mainly. Length is your length, so that's your vertical line, which is essentially how tall you look, as well as your actual height kind of combined. And shape, which is how round or how straight you are. So if you had like a really round curvy frame like Marilyn Monroe, you'd be rounded. If you had more of a straight shape like Audrey Hepburn, you'd be straight. So um, some of the other systems really overcomplicate those elements but I've Mm -hmm. tried to really simplify them into those three core elements but in terms of yourself let's say you were going to try and find your own best lines for your body type um, what I like to do is take a picture at chest level so it doesn't lean downwards it doesn't lean upwards it's taken at chest level um of your entire body head to toe so it doesn't end at the knees and it's not focused A lot of people make the assumption that it's focused on your chest and hips because the fruit shape Mm -hmm. system is, but it's really head to toe. And then my favorite system is to do a couple of line drawings. So getting an app like Procreate is best and creating like a layer 
and drawing around your frame. So that could be drawing around your shoulders, drawing around your chest and your hips and really down to your knees is like the best one. And then taking the picture of you away and then looking at the lines that are left helps you get much more objective about the lines that you're seeing um, rather than thinking, oh, you know, I hate that bit of my body or I love that yeah. bit of my body or so many people just cannot see themselves clearly. So taking yourself away, so helpful. So I sent you a photo of me. So I'm so curious to see what the result is. <laughs> oh, absolutely. As for my system, I would put you as narrow, long and straight. So narrow, you okay. have narrowness in your shoulders. Um, and that's mainly because the main points in your shoulders are very close to like the armpit point is the best way I can phrase it. The more wide that point is, the wider your shoulders would be. And width is very much guided by the shoulders. Um, shoulders is like the most important element there. And then it flows all the way down. So you have quite a narrow column shape. Then length, you're five foot five, which is considered like moderate height. Um, okay. But you have more of a long line. So you look longer than you are in photo form. So you have like a long space between your shoulders and the top of your knees. So that means long lines are likely to be more harmonious with you than really short mini styles. Really? Okay, wow. And then straight lines, fairly self-explanatory. Um, mm -hmm. You have more straight lines in your frame than rounded lines in your frame. So straighter shapes are best, which is why you're probably so drawn to blazers as these are really structured. They have lots of straight, sharp, lines so mm -hmm. that makes so much sense that that's already a signature part of your style are you interested in what i think about your kibby type i can only give my opinion i recommend dramatic lines for you which really? are also yes i recommend dra wow. dramatic and um i would say your closest seconds like the other ones that i would consider if i were you would be flamboyant natural and dramatic classic so both of those are also kind of straight, angular, um, but dramatic would be my first choice for you because of that long line, that narrowness in the shoulders and the straight lines. Now, in me even saying that, that's going to cause one hell of a debate in your comments. <laughs> okay, we're ready for it. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's such a hard thing for anyone to ag agree on. I mean, mm -hmm. th there are so many elements of Kibby which are vague from the man himself or kind of hard to digest and it is it is kind of like a a, a rule in the kibby system that only kibby can tell you your kibby type so he might disagree with me and then you can mm -hmm. do with that what you will but if i was going to recommend a set of kibby lines for you it would be dramatic actually i'm curious how you recommend clothing then do you kind of go piece by piece like what types of clothes would look better on you in terms of like v-neck crew neck t-shirt how kind of in the weeds do we get in terms of the recommendations of what best what pieces best suits that type of body type great question i think a general rule is echo your body type in your clothes if you're narrow you wear narrow lines so for example a narrow neckline would be a closed neckline like a crew neck um because it's very close to your face um whereas a wide neckline if you were narrow and you wore like a really wide boxy neckline kind of that have been on trend lately i've seen a lot of them which mm -hmm. kind of come all the way down to here that would feel somewhat off and overwhelming um because the breadth in your shoulders wouldn't then continue and almost fill out the neckline so the idea is that you echo what you already have and then you combine with the other elements like straight lines so a blazer's straight line because obviously it's got a straight lapels the actual shape of the blazer is straight echo the rules as closely as you can all the way through the look and then for example with trousers rather than like really wide leg palazzo pant style trousers which are likely to overwhelm you again you'd want more straight lines a bootleg, maybe any kind of cigarette pant would be fine. A maxi skirt that's straight, but anything yeah. long and flowy and wide, I would avoid. What if your style doesn't match your body type? Yeah. It's, it's a problem that lots of people come to me for. First of all, you don't have to dress for your body type. So there's that. But let's say you do want to dress for your body type and for your mm -hmm. personal style together. Let's say, for example, you loved palazzo pants, but you were really narrow. So they look really overwhelming on you, but you really want to give them a go. Well, the first piece of advice would be to keep everything else in the outfit really structured and really narrow. So having a crew neck, having like a smart structured blazer, having a structured bag, it goes all the way down to accessories, having more yeah. of a neat shoe whereas a lot of the advice online that you're going to see is totally to ma 
match that um, baggy trouser with baggy items and that's going to be totally overwhelming. So finding some way to pull it in, make it more structured, make it more um, like constricted and compact, that would be like my first step. So to pair it with things in a way where it's the statement piece, it's okay to have one or two things that break the rules. It then just looks cool and edgy. And I would say edginess is the main effect of breaking your body type lines. So you're going to look more um, avant-garde, like you're trying to be edgy or rebellious. And so having one or two items like that in your outfit can be really cool if that's an effect you want to create. Is that something that is constant even with like body changes let's say whether you're like working out a lot and building muscle or perhaps you gain weight how do you navigate changes in your body shape and size over time kibby body types is that is static it's very much based in your bone structure which won't go through extreme changes um you know they may get you might get some slight changes like with pregnancy many people's hips grow but that's you know one that's one sort of singular change and your changes are likely to align with your body type that's the argument that he and uh, like kibby followers would make in mine i would say that i've got some of those principles it's unlikely to go through dramatic changes but yeah in in my opinion some people's body types do change as you gain weight. For example, Taylor Swift, I would say her body has become a lot rounder and a lot softer as Mm -hmm. when she is at her higher weight points. And so more rounded shapes do look more complementary to her in those times. Other people, they get straighter waists when they gain weight or um, they feel wider in the shoulders and so on. So I would say that weight gain and loss can change the best lines for you. Mm -hmm. Um, But probably unlikely to be to a dramatic extent you're probably likely to go from like a straight to a medium um, rather than a very straight to a very rounded you like you just have like a very slight shift in terms of your the matrix system can you quickly go over like if you are x y and z like maybe what would be best because if i'm narrow but then someone else watching might be a wide or a medium what would best suit those types of different bodies that you would categorize In the body matrix, there are 27 different combinations. So I can't go through all of them. In width, you have narrow, medium, and wide. We've covered narrow a lot here. Um, Mm -hmm. So narrow shapes, um, structure, closed necklines, kind of thin accessories, like thin rings, thin bangles, um, like thin belts, that kind of thing, Um, as well as fitted like sleeves, cuffs. Um, That's best for narrowness. Width, wide necklines, um slouchier shapes thicker um accessories like more of like a thick bangle or a heavy bangle um more flared legs flared hems um that's best for width and then medium would be something in the middle so you anything medium is it's difficult to define so if you're like I'm not particularly narrow I'm not particularly wide I really don't consider myself leaning either way that would Mm -hmm. mean you were medium And if you're medium, you want necklines that are not overly wide and not overly closed. This neckline, I would consider medium. It's not like shoulder to shoulder. It's not really open and wide, but it's also not, it's also not particularly a closed neckline. It's really somewhere in the middle. For length, this is probably the most intuitive, makes most sense. Long lines, long lines. So if you were long, if you looked long, you had a long height. And I would personally consider a long height anything over five foot seven. Um, Some people will disagree with that, but I think long lines tend to look best on people of that height and above. Um, But you can also look really long at any height. So that's something to bear in mind. Probably five foot three and below, you're probably going to look best in short lines, but you can look short at any height. So same thing applies. Short lines would be, let's say you're going to wear a maxi skirt, you'd want it to be above the ankle, knee length, above the knee, um, hip length at the hips or above. Um, And then there's a last element, which is shape. So straight lines, again, this is kind of self-explanatory. So more of a straight blazer, straight skirts um, that don't have like a rounded or circular shape. They're more squarish or rectangular. And then round shapes, round shapes like, circles so more um fitted at the waist as well it's very important for round shapes um kind of like a tulip skirt would be rounded and medium again somewhere in the middle it's not obviously rounded it's not obviously straight it's nice and blended like again a boot cut I would consider medium because they're not particularly 
like round like a pair of mum jeans would be round but they're not either mm -hmm. they're not straight either so they they border that line thank you so much ellie jean i have learned so so much i'm really excited to start playing with this and experimenting with it can you tell us where we can find you yes so uh, instagram is the best place ellie jean roden on instagram body and style on tiktok and for any services bodyandstyle.com there's loads of resources on there as well so there's lots of information there So I found that call with Ellie Jean so enlightening and the one thing that really stood out to me was how I feel like I already naturally gravitated for the most part towards things that suit my body type to begin with, whether it be the KB dramatic type or the long, narrow and straight body type. And the other thing I just did was I tried on a bunch of outfits that would be wrong for me and ones that would be right. I own things that are technically wrong for my body type, but does that mean I'm going to declutter all of those pieces? Absolutely not. I really liked how Ellie Jean also gave us tools to make the things work that may not necessarily align or quote unquote be right for your body type. So what I find really valuable and useful in this is that it's not really a license to just declutter all of your stuff and go shopping for the things that suit you. And it's, and it's not necessarily about buying what's right for your body all the time. I like that there's still clear permission that you can wear what you like, but if you want to feel a little bit more balanced or more harmonious with your current body type, then there's ways to do that. So I think it was really helpful. And if you want to book with Ellie Jean, I will leave everything linked down below for you. She is so sweet, so lovely, and I think you will have just an amazing experience. She also offers color consultation, so definitely check it out. And if you want to see the full unedited interview I had with Ellie Jean, be sure to check out my Patreon. I recently launched it, so I'm going to have things like full guest interviews on there behind the scenes footage so if you're interested in supporting me that way you can check out my patreon down below thanks so much for watching leave this video a thumbs up it's also a great free way you can support me and i'll see you next sunday bye